what goes down at 2 a.m. and this is going to be the most boring episode ever. Um, 2 a.m. what goes down, my bed goes down at 2 a.m. Like literally I'm sleep. I, I don't do anything at 2 a.m. anymore. But back in the day, um, yeah, I mean, I was out and about partying a little bit. Uh, but now, yeah, it's mostly studio time and bedtime for me. The craziest thing I've ever done after a club, that's a hard one because there's a lot of crazy shit that I've done. I guess there's this one um, moment that sticks out. Um, I'll just say my first time in Vegas for sure. I don't know if you guys have heard of the Duffel Bag Divas. They're amazing twin DJs. Um, and yeah, they're like my sisters. And I was going through a breakup at the time and being extra dramatic. And they were like, you know what? We're playing Akon's birthday uh, in Vegas. Let's like go out and forget about everything. So quite literally went out and forgot about everything and um, got so wasted that like I remember, well, basically nothing except for the end of the night when I was, or excuse me, the next morning when I woke up in a chair upright and my friends told me that I cried myself to sleep and like literally was like screaming for my ex-boyfriend. It's pretty sad, so. W-Y-D. <laughs> no, no bullshit. W-Y-D. That anything after 2 a.m. that says W-Y-D is all bad. I don't really get a lot of pickup lines. Nobody really talks to me. But uh, I would just say when guys like start over overtly talking about like what they have and the, like the money they have as like a way to kind of like reel me in, it usually kind of turns me off. So that's like not good. If like buy me like an iced chai or something. I don't know. Like that's a turn on. My aunt. For sure. Which is like, that sounds really random, but like my aunt is really, really lit. But um, yeah, I just wouldn't want to like run into her at the club <laughs> that night. I don't even know if that's a terrible answer, but yeah, my aunt. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, uh, I was just doing karaoke the other night. Purple Rain, and I know that's a really sad and depressing song, but it's like a eight minute ball of amazingness that if you just played Purple Rain in the club, like at the end of the night, like just everybody would probably leave and like have sex with each other or, or like, like be making out. Oh, wow, that's easy. Um, so I'll try and make this short. I was going home in Tarzana at the time and um, from the club and I was pulling up to my house and I'm just thinking that there's, there's a guy walking down the street and I'm thinking that he's gonna be like walking his dog or something. And then as I park in my car and I get out, I realize he doesn't have a, a dog. He's just walking around the neighborhood, cool, whatever. I walk up to my house and as I'm walking across the street, he's like going this way and I'm coming this way. So we kind of meet and as I'm meeting to get to the sidewalk, he's kind of like speeding up and I felt that energy. So I just kind of like book it to the front door and it's not even, we didn't even meet, this is funny. And then I turn around, and he's literally like right behind me. Like literally the light went on, he's right there. He got spooked and turned around and like ran back out the driveway. But as far as like creepy encounters, that's definitely the creepiest encounter I've ever had at 2 a.m. My most exciting celebrity encounter definitely was Kid Cudi. Um, Kid Cudi reached out to me, uh, what was it, two years ago. Uh, based on a record that I had put out uh, called Hands On. And I'll never forget, like, out of nowhere, like, I got this notification on my Twitter. It said, the chosen one has followed you on Twitter. And I was like, who's that? <laughs> like, who's the chosen one? And then, obviously, it said Kid Cudi. And then I got a DM from him. And me thinking, like, typical industry shit, like, he's probably going to be, a, like, a weirdo. Like, he's probably going to be, like wants to have sex and weird stuff, but it wasn't anything like that. Like literally linked up with him um, at his studio and uh, literally talked about music like the entire night. For like four hours, we sat there and talked about his newer project at that time. He played me his music like that hadn't been released yet. He talked to me about like, you know, his Grammys and just like his journey. And that was hands down the like best celebrity encounter I've ever had because not only was it like I just met him, 
like he really inspired me and like told me like verbatim like the women are the future so he really like kind of helped me stay in the game and keep doing what I'm doing. So I produce and I engineer, um, and, but, and I'm not the typical producer uh, where I'm partying with like a million bad bitches in my studio, or excuse me, bad boys in my studio, you know, like for the ambiance or whatever. So the most fun I have in the studio sessions uh, is with uh, my friend, he's a really awesome writer, his name is Ver Simmons. And uh, yeah, we always like literally have so much fun in the studio, like every time that we're making music, it's just like, it's not like work, it's just like, literally hanging out. This is gonna be really bad because I'm spoiled after this. I performed at EDC, um, what was that, 2017 EDC, uh, the main stage. And that was in front of like over 100,000 people. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and say that's my favorite place to perform is gigantic music festival arenas. I am spoiled, <laughs> I can't help it. That was the first place I ever performed, so yeah. Yes, I am highly inspired by uh, the nightlife and crowds. Like, the energy is, like, unlike any other. Like, I was asked if I ever get nervous, and I think I get more nervous in front of smaller crowds than I do larger crowds.